Welcome to the Foundation for Women's Cancer educational presentation to help you understand more about cervical cancer, HPV, and steps you can take to prevent cervical cancer. Hello, my name is Fidel Valea. I'm an Associate Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology as well as Gynecologic Oncology at Duke University Medical Center in North Carolina. And I'm here today to talk about cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is the second most common cause of cancer deaths in women worldwide. It is a cancer that is caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. HPV is a very common virus. In the United States, we have somewhere between six and seven million new cases a year, and approximately 70% of our adult population has at some point in time encountered an HPV infection. Fortunately, we now have good screening tests for the detection of cervical cancer or its precursor, namely the pap test, and or the HPV test. We also have a vaccine available for women ages 9 through 26 years old. The quadrivalent vaccine is now approved and recommended routinely for boys aged 11 and 12. A pap test is a very important test in the prevention of cervical cancer. The beauty is that it actually can pick up changes way before their cancer and give us an opportunity to intervene and treat the HPV effects on the cervix. New guidelines recommend that women receive their first pap test at age 21 and not before. What is HPV or human papillomavirus? It actually is a group of viruses that represent over a hundred different viruses. We break them down into the low risk type and the high risk type. There are approximately 15 or so high risk types that are responsible for the majority of cervical cancers in the United States. HPV is associated with warts, plantar warts, genital warts. It also is associated with cancers of the cervix, the vagina, the vulva, the anus, and even some cancers from the head and neck region are associated with HPV. Although the majority of people catch HPV through sexual contact, this does not necessarily entail sexual intercourse. It can be acquired through any skin-to-skin -skin contact. The virus is transmitted through sexual contact it's a very common virus with approximately 70% of our adult population that has been sexually active having encountered this virus at some point in their life. Fortunately, most HPV infections of the cervix clear on their own, usually within a matter of months to a couple of years. However, those infections that persist, especially of the high-risk HPV type, are the ones that are most commonly associated with cervical cancer and the ones that we really want to detect. A persistent infection with a high-risk HPV is the most significant risk factor for the development of cervical cancer in the United States. That's why it's so important to get your pap test done on a regular basis. Women should receive their first pap test at age 21. There is also a test that can detect the high-risk family of HPV viruses. We even have a vaccine against HPV. The current vaccine is recommended for women ages 11 through 26. However, the federal government has approved it for girls starting in age 9 up to 26. As mentioned earlier, the vaccine also has been approved for boys. Secondly, one can delay the onset of sexual activity. One can limit the number of sexual partners or use barrier methods such as condoms to try and prevent the transmission of this virus. Unfortunately, the barrier methods are not 100% effective, although they do provide some protection. One can also quit or limit the amount of smoking. One can maintain a healthy diet. And finally, one should consider a vaccine. Vaccinate prior to the onset of sexual debut, somewhere between the ages of 9 and 26, to try and prevent the effects of the HPV virus. Cervical cancer is almost entirely preventable. The first step in eliminating this cancer is for everyone to be vaccinated. The vaccines are now approved and recommended for both girls and boys. Hear from Kathy, a mom. A parent's first job is to keep their kids safe. I have two daughters. When I heard about the vaccine, first thing I did was uh, go to our pediatrician and to find out if it was safe and effective. And she reassured me on both fronts that indeed it was safe and effective. And I asked her if she had had the vaccine for her daughters. And she said, absolutely, without 
hesitation. So that was very reassuring for me. While they are in my care, I wanted to make sure that I could do everything that I could to keep them safe. This was a gift I could give my girls. I really feel as though keeping our children safe is our primary job. And this was one thing that I could do. Um, it, it felt like a no-brainer. Cervical cancer is a slow-growing cancer, which is why pap and HPV testing are so important to catch it before it becomes a full-blown cancer, when preventive steps are still available. Women diagnosed with cervical cancer today did not have the option to be vaccinated against this cancer. Hear from Kelly, a survivor. I mean, I don't think you would ever know that I had cancer or abnormal pap, but the day I got the news, um, I actually got it over the phone because it was the Friday before a holiday weekend. And um, normally, I guess they don't do that, but it was a big shock. Uh, don't really remember much about the conversation on the phone. I know I didn't ask many questions, and on my way home, I didn't really know what to expect, but um, got home, surrounded myself by family, and I didn't know really what to think at first, and didn't really think much, to be honest. Um, I had five weeks of radiation, uh, one day a week with chemo, and then two um, in-hospital internal radiation treatments. Um, it's long, long, long five weeks. Every day my mom took me. Uh, it was great to have that support, um, even on the days that I didn't want to go. Every day of the treatment, my mom would come up from Indiana and take me for treatment. Um, without her, I don't, I don't know if I could have, could have done it. Um, family's really important when you're going through something like that, and it's just great to have them, have them there. I, I told my friends, and they were all really great. And they would come up for game night, knowing that I didn't want to go out, and we just hung out. And they were just everyone was really great, really supportive, and that's important to surround yourself by people that are looking out for your best well-being and want you to get well and do your best. The most important thing is to go in with a positive attitude and know that you're going to beat it. Uh, it's all you can do, and brave. But um, that's that's how I got through to where I am today. Um, I see my doctor, well, because of everything, I see my doctor every three months. Got through it, um, had uh, great results, not a lot of problems, luckily. Uh, really think that, you know, I did really good with the treatment. Today I am healthy, um, no, no problems at all. Um, I guess you wouldn't, I kind of forget that it, sometimes that I went through what I did and surprised that I'm pretty darn healthy today and I'm lucky, very lucky. I think I, it hit everybody pretty close to home and um, it was really a reality check. Get tested, go for your yearly checkups, even if you don't think anything's wrong, you still need to go. And if you have young teenagers, teenage girls, talk to your doctor about the vaccination. Uh, it's, everything you can do is important, so everything helps. Fortunately, Kelly had a good outcome from her treatment. It is very important for women who suspect or who have been diagnosed with cervical cancer to seek care first from a gynecologic oncologist. Remember, vaccinate early, pap test regularly, HPV test when recommended.